The telltale evidence of the Ice Age transition storm that is in progress is visible in four different areas in the form of four major astrophysical aspects that all have a common cause. Number one, we see a weakening sun. Number two, we see sharply increased earthquakes all over the world. Number three, we see already a massive increase in cosmic reflux. Number four, we see a progressive weakening of the greenhouse effect that keeps our climate in moderation. The cause for all of these four aspects is the now ongoing reduction of the electric energy density in the local space in which our solar system is located. These four aspects are poised to have enormous effects, far more than we may imagine. Number one, the dimmer sun will cause vast ice sheets to form anew in the northern hemisphere where much of our food is presently grown. However, this isn't a big thing because we as human beings have the power to relocate our agriculture far out of the endangered regions into the tropics. We might place most of it afloat on the equatorial seas, since this would be the most efficient solution enabled by automated industrial production. The end result will be that we come out of the already mounting food crisis far richer than we yet imagine, with a much more powerful civilization in all its numerous aspects. The now unfolding Ice Age transition will forcibly inspire us, will forcibly inspire us to get us out of our easy chair and apply our potential to develop the great productive power that we have as human beings. Number two. The earthquakes are increasing. The increase is a part of the package. This aspect of the transition cannot be avoided. Still, it isn't anything to cry over. As human beings, we have the power to adjust our living accordingly. We can manufacture brand new cities, produce them in great quantities, and place them afloat on the disease where earthquakes cannot affect them, no matter how strong they might become. Here, too, we will come out richer as we get ourselves out of the easy chair and utilize the creative and productive power that we have as human beings to produce those brand new floating cities in great numbers with the power of automated high-temperature industrial processes. These types of brand new cities could already be produced with existing technologies and resources and with so little effort that society could provide them to itself for free as a credit for the future, a wealth creating investment by society into itself. Number three. Yes, the cosmic reflux is increasing. NASA's Ulysses satellite has measured a 20% increase, and that's where the real fun begins. That's a result of the weaker sun that Ulysses has also measured, which results into a weaker heliosphere. The consequent increase in cosmic reflux reaching the Earth nets us huge benefits. Cosmic rays are typically high-energy electrons and protons moving up to near the speed of light. That's electricity in motion. 
Electricity in motion creates a moving magnetic field which in turn generates secondary electricity. By this process, all commercial electricity is being generated. When the cosmic ray electricity passes through the human body at a rate of 50,000 particles per day, while the cosmic ray particles won't collide with anything, their motion generates secondary electric currents in the body that enhance the living biological processes. All biological processes are to a large degree electrically operated. We have lived during the interglacial in a cosmic restarved world. The Ice Age epoch that corresponds with a weaker sun and a weaker heliosphere provides a much richer cosmic ray electric environment as less of the cosmic ray flux is blocked by the weaker heliosphere in an Ice Age environment. It may have been the more powerful electric environment in the Ice Ages that has enabled the amazing development of humanity in the first place. This makes us literally the children of the cosmic ray flux of the Ice Ages. That was an epoch of the highest cosmic ray energy input into the biosphere in the last 450 million years. The kind of high-powered cosmic ray epoch in which humanity emerged began more than two million years ago. The previous time, when similar conditions occurred, takes us back 450 million years when the great proliferation of life began on this planet in the Ordovician time frame. We now experience similar conditions and possibly more powerful conditions than those in which we ourselves began to develop. This is the promise of the Pleistocene epoch to us, which will likely be with us for another 10 million years and will likely be increasing for the next three million years. That's something to celebrate rather than to dread. Number four, the measured increase of cosmic reflux increases the cloud formation in the troposphere. Increased cloud formation reduces the greenhouse effect. The result of this process is widely evident in weather consequences around the Earth. The weather is indeed changing. The Earth's troposphere that is 6 to 20 kilometers thick, where the weather is created, contains 80% of the mass of the atmosphere and almost all of its water vapor that produces 97% of the greenhouse effect. That's where cloud formation happens, and it takes a toll on the water vapor, which thereby reduces the greenhouse effects that moderate our climate. The greenhouse effects reduce the otherwise large temperature swings that we would experience. With the greenhouse protection now getting weaker, more infrastructures are needed to make up for the shortfall including large water supply systems to compensate for the resulting drought conditions that are now becoming ever more prevalent. In addition, the Earth is getting colder as increased cloudiness reflects more of the incoming solar energy back into space. The white top of the clouds are highly reflective. The cooling effect that this has on Earth is also universally evident in numerous ways, which are too many to list here. Of course, the resulting new weather patterns do not pose a critical problem, since the needed infrastructures to compensate for them can be built relatively easily. And so they will be built. Also, they will likely be built on the kind of large scale that matches the scale of the unfolding global challenge, which is to rapidly develop new food production capabilities, such as by irrigating the Sahara Desert and bringing water to other dry regions. 
The concept of water supply infrastructures will then be raised to higher levels of developmental power, to levels that have never been seen before. And this will likely happen soon. The principles for it already exist, and the materials and energy resources to implement the principles do likewise exist. And best of all, the requisite principles can be implemented fast, and the resulting infrastructures can be expanded with the increasing needs in step with the Ice Age transition advancing. For all the above reasons, the new Ice Age that is already unfolding, slight as it presently is, should inspire a great celebration as it singles a new dawn for all mankind with a renaissance of such power in universal economic development that the likes of it has not been seen on Earth in its entire history. While the dawn of a new Ice Age is unfolding, the breakout of humanity from the prison cave where science remains decapitated and tied to the Earth is also unfolding and progressing. The breakout into unfettered freedom cannot be held back. It is proceeding with astrophysical power, with cosmic ray power. Here, the face truly applies to all of humanity. Resistance is futile. The phrase applies especially to empire, as the new dawn will be its doom, where the phrase applies in big letters, resistance is futile. The system of oligarchy will end at this stage while the new world, the Ice Age world, unfolds every more. The critical part for us, however, for humanity as a whole, is determined by the message of the universe that needs to be understood, that resistance against its dynamics is futile. And this begins with the recognition of plasma in space that as particles is 100,000 times smaller than an atom, but makes up 99.999% of the mass of the universe in which the power of the universe is located including cosmic ray power that appears to have enabled the human presence to develop. When empire controls science, 99.999% of the universe is deemed not to exist. That's tragic quackery. Here resistance, resistance to quackery and mental imprisonment is liberating. It opens the door to profound discoveries. <laughs>